Hey everyone, my name is Michael Gorshan. I am here to do a little discussion about the COVID-19 virus outbreak and hopefully dispel a few myths and answer some questions that you might have. Uh, the goal is just to give a quick overview here on this uh, little recording. And then later on, we're gonna set up a uh, webinar where people can call in and we can do a question and answer to answer any other questions. So first of all, by way of introduction, uh, my name is Michael Roshan. I am, uh, I've been a team physician for pro cycling teams since about 2005, and I've worked at all levels of, of the sport, including uh, working with Olympic athletes, uh, grand tours, et cetera. I've worked with the United Healthcare pro cycling team, with Garmin, and a bunch of other um, teams in between. In my day job, I'm, I'm an emergency physician uh, in Colorado Springs, and I'm the chief of the medical staff for a large hospital system in Colorado Springs. I'm also on our uh, COVID-19 task force. I'm the medical specialist on the incident command for our response for uh, this large hospital system to the COVID-19 virus. I also happen to have a PhD in microbiology and immunology. And in my PhD, I studied retroviruses. So um, I have a decent amount of background knowledge on uh, COVID and coronaviruses. The, Honest truth is nobody knows uh, everything about this. It's changing fast. This is a, a new situation. And so uh, nobody has all of the answers, that's for sure. Um, but there are a lot of uh, misconceptions and a lot of, uh, you know, uh, a lot of things people are concerned about. So those are the things I wanted to uh, address here. Um, I wanna start with the basics of this virus and, and talk about the things that we can do to keep ourselves safe and keep our athletes safe. I wanna start by saying there is a, a serious cause for concern with this virus, but not a cause for panic. Uh, and, and that's an important distinction. And the real reason for that distinction is that there are things we can do. If we do uh, take all of the, the steps that we can to keep ourselves and our athletes safe, uh, we can, but there's no reason for panic at that point. So let's start with a basic description of the coronavirus. So. Uh, everybody now the whole term coronavirus is making people nervous. The honest truth is you have had a coronavirus before. Sometimes in the winter when you get the sniffles for a few days, um, coronavirus is one of the viruses that can cause that. Uh, a couple years ago, a, a bad coronavirus broke out into the U.S. population and that was called uh, SARS, Severe uh, Acute Respiratory Syndrome Virus. And that was a coronavirus that was new um, and people did not have any immunity to it and it caused a lot of lung disease and had a very high mortality rate. Uh, it lasted for uh, about a season, maybe a season and a half, and then we don't really hear about it much anymore. This new virus that came out of China this year is a coronavirus that's very similar to SARS. It uh, causes the same um, lung symptoms that, that people were quite worried about with SARS. Um, but in this case, it seems to be spreading faster. So let, let's talk a little bit about, about that and, and why it is. So the, the basic thing is the fact that it's a coronavirus uh, does not need to be particularly scary. The problem is that um, since it just came out into the human population from animals, no one has any innate immunity to it. And that's what's causing it to be spread so quickly through communities. It spread quickly through China and then went from there to several other countries where it has also spread pretty quickly. The, the thing is that we understand a lot about this virus already and we're learning more every single day and there are things that we can do to uh, mitigate the risk. So the, the first thing to understand is how is this virus spread? Viruses can spread a lot of different ways. Some viruses you get from uh, food, from water. Some viruses you can get from mosquitoes like the Zika virus. Um, some you can only get from blood transfusions like hepatitis uh, or sexually transmitted viruses. In this case, it's spread by contact and droplets. And that is really important to understand since that tells us how we can protect ourselves from spreading it, uh, from getting it and from spreading it to others. Um, Honestly, uh, everybody thinks that this virus is, is spreading so fast, it's the worst thing we've ever seen. That really is not true. There are a lot of other viruses that spread much, much faster than this, uh, and they can spread by respiratory contact. Uh, for example, we're used to influenza uh, coming out every year. Uh, that often spreads pretty quickly. 
but um, but there are other viruses that that spread way worse. If you were in a room with somebody that had chickenpox and you never had chickenpox before, you are most definitely going to get chickenpox. In the case of coronavirus, it's not nearly that uh, transmissible, and so there are things you can do to protect yourself. So the two main ways it, it uh, it's transmissible is through contact or through droplets. So how do you how do you stop contact? The best thing you can do is is keep your distance from people that look sick. Anything over six feet, you are probably not going to get a viral infection with coronavirus from that patient. So six feet is sort of uh, a key number. Um, and wash your hands a lot. So let's say that person coughs, uh, a droplet lands on a surface and you touch it with your hands and then you touch your face. Um, that's how you, get the, how you get the virus So uh, from contact. So don't, uh, don't touch your face if you don't have to. And um, and definitely wash your hands. Uh, th there's two good ways to do it. One is soap and water for 20 seconds. Uh, that's that's pretty clear. The other thing is these uh, these hand sanitizers that have a high alcohol content. Um, they are really good at, at inactivating this virus. So you can use hand sanitizer or wash your hands. The main thing is uh, if you're in public or if you're in a new new place, don't touch your face until you've washed your hands. The second way it gets transferred is through droplets. So that's if you're close enough to someone when they cough or sneeze, the droplet goes in the air and if it lands on your face or any respiratory tract, then you can, you can get it. So that's why keeping uh, six feet of distance is key. If you have to be within six feet of, of someone, what we do in the hospital is if we suspect they might have it, is we have that, that patient wear a mask and we wear a mask uh, and eye protection. That will protect you from droplets. You don't have to wear these uh, highly technical, you know, complete uh, respirator masks um, because this virus is not spread by respiratory contact. Uh, it's spread by droplets and, uh, and uh, contact transmission. That's a key, a, a key difference. Um, so let's say that you have to be close to someone. Um, whether that's for your work or for travel or something like that, I would suggest that you wear a mask if you're around anyone who, um, who looks sick for sure. Don't be around them if you, if you can help it, but wear a mask. The mask does two things. One, it prevents the, the droplets from coming in contact with your airway. And the, uh, the next thing it does is, is frankly, it keeps you from touching your face, which is probably one of the biggest things that the mask does for us. So uh, you can get just a regular old surgical mask. You can find them in lots of places. If you have to be around, uh, around people who are coughing or sneezing, then that's what I would do. So distance, Clean your hands, uh, don't touch your face if you don't have to, and uh, use a mask if you need to. And, and that brings up the next, the next thing, which is travel. Um, so travel is one of those times where you are sometimes forced to be in close contact with, uh, with someone that you don't know, uh, definitely within six feet if you're sitting next to someone on a plane. Um, that's, the, that's a situation where I would take some hand sanitizer, make sure you're cleaning your, your hands after you, after you touch anything, and don't touch your face. Wear a mask if you if you um, are around anyone who is sick. Um, uh, the, the uh, people get nervous about the air on planes. The truth is most uh, planes in, in the US or in the world have really uh, highly filtered air. So the, the, the just being on the plane is not necessarily a big risk factor. And again, this virus is not spread by respiratory contact. It's spread by contact and droplets. Um, so you don't have to worry about just breathing the air on a plane. And you certainly don't need to wear one of those big masks. Um, so let's talk about uh, what kind of travel we should be doing. I think that there is a very clear guidance that we should not be traveling to areas that have uh, that have high level of community transmission of this virus. That's an important distinction. Uh, initially, in, in this outbreak, all of the transmission uh, we could relate back to the original outbreak in China. What happened is, as it got out of China and became spread throughout the community, then it's much harder to contain. The way you handle it when it's all coming from one place is you, is you, you know, try not to get around people that have been in China. But how do you do that when it's spread now throughout your entire city and you don't know who has been in contact with it? The community transmission is what we're trying to, uh, to prevent uh, with this outbreak. Um, 
So definitely do not travel to a place that has community transmission. Right now, those are on the CDC website. It's China, Italy, um, Korea, uh, Japan is still a level two, uh, not quite a level three. So um, there are a few cities in the US that, uh, that are getting concerning, but right now the CDC is not limiting travel to Washington or, or um, Sacramento or anything like that. I would say don't travel to any of the places that the CDC recommends against unless you absolutely have to. Uh, if you do travel to those places, you, you need to be uh, sort of on your own for two weeks afterwards to make sure you don't have the, the, the virus. So you can work remotely um, uh, or whatever. We call that self-quarantine, which means that you're just keeping yourself away from other people so you don't transmit the virus without knowing it. Uh, that is an important uh, part about this virus. It does seem to have uh, a phase where people are relatively asymptomatic. They don't, they're not really sick at all. Uh, they have just a little sniffle, and, but they can be transmitting the virus. That's what we're trying to prevent by that self-quarantine. Um, travel in the U.S. right now, uh, again, it's one of those things we need to keep watching. Uh, I probably wouldn't travel unless you really need to. Certainly wouldn't travel for fun right now. Um, but if you have to go to an event or, or something, uh, you know, for competition uh, or for part of your job, then, then it is generally considered safe to do that in the U.S. right now. Let's talk a little bit about this virus and athletes specifically. Um, so first of all, I would say um, if you're an athlete, keep training. These, uh, these sort of outbreaks can sometimes turn off very quickly. We don't know exactly what this one is going to do, but if you look at what happened to SARS or the Zika virus, it was all over the news for weeks and weeks and weeks, and then it basically just disappeared. This, this could uh, close down pretty quickly, you know, when the weather changes uh, or something like that. And then what you don't wanna do is stop training and have a, have a competition coming up that you're now not ready for. So keep training. Training is not gonna get you exposed to this virus. It's not like the spray from the road is gonna transmit this virus. Uh, it, it really is other people that are gonna transmit it. So training may be one of, the, one of the safest things you can do out in the sunshine is probably about the safest place you can be out in the sunshine by yourself. So I would say keep training. As far as we know, uh, training and, and intense exercise does not make you more susceptible to this virus. There's a lot of uh, concern about that over, over vi seasonal viruses throughout the year. If your immune system gets low from a, a, a lot of training, you can, you can get it. The honest truth with this virus is we, you've never seen this virus before. If you become exposed to it, you're probably going to get it. So, so uh, training is not going to change that. So keep training. You're unlikely to get sick from training. And, um, and if you want to, uh, you want to be ready for competition, of course, you have to do that. Now travel for, uh, for an event or for training is, is, a, is another issue. Um, definitely, uh, there are a lot of events getting canceled already that that makes it easy. If the, if the event is not canceled, and it's in a place that has that has a lot of community spread, then that's one of those things you need to think about. Um, my general recommendation would be, uh, if it's not absolutely necessary for your program, uh, I wouldn't go to a place that has high level of community spread. Um, and, and what I think you should do is, is uh, talk with your coach and, and make sure that, that, you, that you know what the level is where you're going. Um, so one thing I wanna be clear on as it relates to athletes and this virus, uh, there's a lot of talk about uh, people getting very mild disease that is not, you know, not any worse than influenza. Um, there's two parts about that. That's true. There's no reason to panic. Most people that get this get a very mild disease. Um, and uh, if you look at the, at the number of people that are getting really sick from this, most of them have underlying lung or heart problems um, or, they're, or they're just very old. Um, the average age of mortality in Italy is actually 81. It does not seem to be causing nearly as severe disease in young people or in very healthy people. So there's no cause for panic. But there is a reason that you, uh, that you want to put off um, getting this. So, so don't think that, well, most people get mild disease, so it doesn't matter if I get this, so I'm going to go ahead and travel to that place where it's being spread. You don't want to get it for, for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's most definitely going to affect the, the way you train and compete. If you get this, you're going to be quarantined. People uh, do not want, want to be around you if you have this virus, um, so, so don't get it. It's going to really in, in, impact your ability to train and to compete. Um, the other thing is the way this works, this virus works, the way that it, 
that it enters the body is through these specific receptors on the lung. Um, it's causing a lot of severe lung disease. Uh, that may not be a big deal for somebody who's not an athlete, but there is reason to suspect that this may cause, for, for some people, just a, a, a random number of, of athletes, it may cause more severe lung disease and may be more of an impact on your ability to train and compete than it would be for a regular person. So I don't, I don't think you, you want to get this virus simply because of the, the lung involvement. Um, the next uh, reason I think you should avoid trying to get it this year is if you can avoid getting it this round, then by next year, there may be more therapies, there may be vaccine uh, options where, where you could uh, avoid it altogether. So I don't think you want to go looking for trouble. Try not to travel to places uh, that, are, that are endemic. Okay, those are the basics. Um, what we will try to do is do an update with a question and answer sometime early next week. Um, I am available and can answer any specific questions. If you have any questions after, after hearing this, um, what I would say is reach out to Kelsey Erickson, either via phone or email, and, and she can help you get in touch with me and we can find a time to, to get on the phone and talk through whatever is your particular issue. Again, there's cause for concern. Um, it is spreading rapidly, but there's something you can do to prevent it. Um, and that is uh, cl clean your hands, um, try to stay within uh, outside of six feet of anybody who, who looks sick, wear a mask if you have to be around people that, that, uh, that are coughing or sniffling and, um, and keep training. Thank you.